Today, I'm going to talk about the slip cross, a unique opening that is unfortunately neglected at the highest levels. The opening begins like a traditional cross, 11-15, 23-18, 24-18, 27-23, and instead of the typical 4-8 or 10-14, red has this 11-16 move, temporarily giving up a piece. However, after 16-20, white is double exposed and must give at least one piece back. So, Despite it not being played in the Grandmaster ranks, it's still worthwhile knowing is there are a number of traps and interesting play that can score you a number of wins. I'm going to highlight two critical variations in this video, but before I go any further, I want to share some checkers artwork by a good friend of the channel, Gary Pollard. My favorite piece is an imagined match between two giants of the game, Alex Moiseev and Marion Tinsley. Gary also created portraits of world champion Lubabalo Kondlo and recent world qualifier runner-up superstar from Kenya Crispin Odiambo. Amazing pieces from a great artist. Thank you Gary. So what's next after this 1620? Well it's probably most natural to go 2419, 3127 is also published, but 2419 is probably best. And now red is mostly cramped in its single corner. So after the side jump, white is just going to naturally develop out of the single corner, and so is red. So all very natural moves here. And now red is going to flank with this 10-14 and also setting up a little bit of a trap here. White is going to attack the vulnerable piece on 11 by going 19-15. And red goes 3-8 in the hopes that white is going to fall into a trap by going 22-17 next, which will lose after 20 to 24. So let's play this out. White can jump 17 10 first. And now 9 14. Attacking this elbow. White is going to jump 28 to 19. And then red has this waiting move with 16-20. White must jump and now we have the broken elbow. And now there's really not much of a choice here for white. Sure it can take this piece back. Just delaying the inevitable. And then red has the double jump here with this piece on nine totally trapped and lost. So that's what red is hoping for. But let's go back instead of that 22-17 move being played. So we now know 22-17 will lose. So what does white play next? Well, 31-27 is best. And now red can start developing 2-7 and white can safely play 22-17 now. Red must protect the piece on 10. So it covers up with 7-10 and white is going to wait with 17-13 going a piece down. But as I've said in previous videos, the adage position beats possession applies here. Now there's two key variations at this point and I'll cover both. The first is this 26-22 move. 
and it's probably not as natural as the 2522, but I bring it up because there's a really nice tactical sequence here. Red looks to be in serious trouble with very few playable moves on the board, but there's a wonderful tactical sequence here that can get it out of this jam. And what it does is it immediately sacrifices two pieces. It plays 1115, and you may think this is outrageous. It's allowing white to get a double jump, and it also allows white to get a king. That's all true. Red is now going to play 14 to 17. White is going to jump. Red is going to jump back, and then it doesn't matter which route white jumps because it results in the same. But let's say it jumps 23 14 and then after 6 9 I'm sure all of you can see this triple jump now we are back to even number of pieces on the board so it's best now just for white to start developing 25 21 red gets a king to put pressure on white's double corner it's best for white to cover up and then red doesn't have much of a way of an attack and now it's just best for white to play for the draw after 24 19 exchange and you can play it out a little bit from here but even number of pieces and about an open board it's a good draw game so instead of the 26 22 move which i showed Maybe 25-22 is a bit more natural, and there's a lot of fun and tricky play here. So after 25-22, red must go 6-10, allowing white to capture the piece on 9. And then going 10-15, white capturing the piece on 14. And then red jumping... 1 to 10, creating a column here and threatening the double exchange in white's double corner. So white can't go 9 to 6 because of that 19 to 24 move. So instead, white deploys a really great tactic here, and it goes 28 to 24. Now, if red goes 5 to 14. White can go 32 to 28 and win instantly. I recommend playing this out on your own board just to see how this can happen. So really, really great tactical sequence there. But instead, it's best for, well, the only move is for red jump 19 to 28. And now white can safely go 9 to 6. Red is going to continue to put pressure on white's double corner. And white has to evade some trouble by going 23-18. Now certainly 19 to 24 can be played, but it's best to simplify matters by going 10-14 next for red. And then white can play the 2623 exchange or 2723, which allows or forces red to make some critical moves here. So 2024, white is looking to attack the piece on 14. Red is going to go in for a king, which it does now. And it's best for Again, white just to evade trouble, exchange off this piece, and then after 11-15, 23-18, 11 we have a great drawn game. I hope you all enjoyed this video of the slip cross, and I recommend trying it out in your own games and see how you like playing it. Thank you again to Gary Pollard for sending me his art pieces. 
I'm very flattered with the portrait of yours truly. It is appreciated and an honor. Thank you, as always, for watching.